Hey everybody, Brandy here doing my comments for my Stampin' Studio today. Today I am going to make a beautiful Christmas card using the uh, Making Christmas Bright stamp set. And it looks something like this. And what I thought I would do today is not just do the tutorial on how I stamped it and stuff, but also show you my process on how to figure out the most efficient way to make this card. So I made the card by hand in terms of stamping and stuff, kind of free form, just to kind of get the idea of how it would, you know, look and stuff, and then I created it that way. But I want to do multiples of this card. So I want to do this on the Stamparatus, and um, I have uh, kind of got all my stuff together, hopefully, you know me, I always have something I'm missing when I do these videos, but I'm gonna show you um, the process that I go through as far as setting up my uh, Stamparatus to be able to crank these cards out um, faster and more efficient, so, all right? It's gonna be kind of a work in progress, and um, I may decide, you know, in the mid of doing something, oh, that's not gonna work, and then I'm gonna to explain to you why it doesn't work. So, this is all kind of um, spur of the moment. I haven't practiced this yet. So, let's see how it happens, all right? All right, let me turn the camera down. Okay, so the first thing I did um, with my Stamparatus to get it ready was um, recognize that I'm gonna be using photopolymer um, stamps. So I do need um, the sponge pad that comes with the um, uh, Stamparatus and I discovered that because as I was trying to do a, a, a test one I realized that the stamped image wasn't coming out right and then I re remembered since it's photopolymer I do need to use the uh, the uh, little pad that comes with it and it um, gives it that extra cushion. Now the other thing I like to do is I like to use a scrap piece of grid paper. We do sell them that are already pre-cut in this um, in this size, um, but if you have your pad of sta um, stamp, excuse me, graph paper or any kind of graph paper, you just want to cut it down to size. Now I don't want this paper moving around, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some um, mini dots on it, and I'm just going to do it in the corner. So it's not going to be anywhere where I'm stamping. Otherwise, that little impression or that little space where it's um, um, raised a little bit can affect your stamped image. So I've just got them basically in these two corners right here. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to um, set up my stamps. And I'm going to do kind of like a test run. Now, this piece of paper right here is a three by three, and that's basically um, the size that I need to be able to stamp this out, and then I'm gonna die cut the center. And I wanna place this sort of in the middle of the paper, but I wanna make sure that I'm putting multiple sheets of paper in the same space. Now you could put it in the corner and you know always butt it up that way, but sometimes that doesn't work the best for me, so I like to just sort of put it in the center and then put the magnets down. And in order to remember where it needs to go, I'm gonna just mark off these corners. And because I'm actually going to do um, a couple of the other um, papers the same way, I'm going to I'm going to notate that this is a the three by three. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use a scrap piece of paper that I've already cut to three by three, and I'm going to put it right there. Then I'm going to put my magnet down. Oopsie. All right. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down my first stamp and it's gonna be the circle. So the circle, um, this is kind of like a, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a swirly circle with some dots, maybe it looks like stars or something like that. Now the one thing I wanna caution you, when you, um, especially anything that's got a, a specific st um, shape to it with the photopolymer, is that even if you're using a, a block, you don't want to use your fingers to kind of block it down like that because I don't know if you can see that but the circle is no longer a circle it's more of an oblong shape if I were to place it down on the paper and let it rest by itself and then pull it up then it's more the perfect shape and it looks like I need to put some more magnets down now this um 
three by three doesn't have to be exactly, oops, um, in the same spot because I'm gonna die cut it. So I'm not terribly concerned that it's not lining up exactly, uh, but I do want it to be kind of in that general area. All right, so I'm gonna lay this down first. And then I'm gonna bring my plate over, push down, and then lift up. Get my other magnet there. Okay. All right, so this one is um, in crushed curry. And let me put a little stamp case under there. And I'm gonna ink up this stamp. And it looks like I got a little extra ink on there, so I'm gonna take my baby wipe. I'm just gonna kinda clean that off just to make sure. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it. And it's not cardstock, so it's not gonna look perfect. But what I'm trying to do at this point is to just kind of figure out where it's at. Because the next thing I wanna do is I want to place um, the sentiment inside. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to pick him up. And I'm going to ink him up. And he is going to get mossy meadow. Sorry about that. You know me. I'm never prepared. Completely. Alright, so I'm going to ink him up. And again, this is just sort of my trial run. Just to make sure. Oop. Now, I like to use the Stampin' Spots um, for the Samparatus because um, it eliminates all that extra uh, ink that you put down. Alright, so, yep. I'm happy with where that's at. Again, I'm not looking for a, um, uh, you know, a crisp um, print. Now I'm gonna. I turn this um, this plate over, and I don't want to make a mess um, on the other side where that inked that stamped is. So I'm gonna put a piece of scrap paper. I'm just gonna lay it down there. All right, so that guy can lay here. All right, and then I want to place this guy where I want him. All right, now this one is going to get Jerry Cobbler. Let me see if I've got a stamp and spot in that color. And of course I don't. <laughs> I had some um, empty stampin' spots, but I think I've used them all, so we're just gonna make do. Close this guy, I don't want him to get dried out. All right, so that position looks good. Okay, so now I've got my stamparatus set up to do these cards or do this particular part of the card. All right, so let's give this a go. Okay, so now actually, um, I could stamp it any order I want to, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the yellow down first, the crushed curry. up my excess and then place him down. So. And 
one so I didn't get it all. I'll go ahead and ink them up again. I think my pad may need to be re-inked. We'll see. What is going on with that? Hmm. Well, let's troubleshoot this. Seems like it's not evenly. Let me get rid of some of this extra paper here. Okay, let's do another piece of paper. washi tape might be causing it to un to not stamp clearly so let's take the washi tape off I just had um, saw another video not too long ago about putting washi tape on there to kind of help pull up the magnets and this is the first time I've used it that way so maybe that's what's causing the problem we'll see all right here we go again better. That washi tape was um, um, just a little bit, making it a little bit too high and so wasn't able to get a clear stamp. So I may have to re-watch those videos and see how they're doing it. All right, let's just see. Okay, that looks much better. Okay, so then we're going to do, I'll close this guy. What did I do with the mossy green? Mossy meadow, mossy meadow, mossy meadow. There it is. Okay, I'm going to stamp him up. Oh, where do I put this so I don't get it everywhere? Perfect. Turn this guy around. think my cherry cobbler needs to be re-inked. So let me do that here. All right. When I re-ink it, then I take a little rewards card, as you can see, and just sort of smooth over and move that ink evenly throughout the pad. Let's see what difference that makes with the stamped image. Because right now it looks a little, um, a little faded. Much better. Okay. And so now I can continue to do this one card after another. Let's do another one. needs to be re-inked as well. May have to do that. That looks good.
at all. All right. So then you have two basically of the exact same stamp. All right, so let's go into, let me close these while we're talking. I'm gonna wipe this excess off. I'm gonna see, may not be able to, I'm gonna see if I can, um, keep these stamps on the page like they are and then um, the next thing I want to do is I want to stamp this guy the uh, lights and I don't know if I've got enough room on the stamparatus to do that but we're gonna try So I'm going to put him up here. And so here is my light stamp. And I'm going to place him place him like right there. That looks good. Let's get my magnet right all right, can I pick him up? Yep. Okay. Let's see. Oh. Might help if I raise him up just a little bit. So that bright stamp doesn't actually stamp. Not that it matters because the DSP is going to cover that part of the card. But, all right, so now I want to use, um, hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. All right, so I'm going to use the uh, Memento Black. Stamp that guy right there. Let's see. So it's a little bit lower than I want it to be. So let's start over on the other side. I'm going to lift this guy up. Put him back here. him a little bit higher. Let's uh, let's clean this guy so I don't mess with this card side. I should be doing this with a scrap piece of paper, but I'm winging it. I'm going to clean it first so I don't accidentally smudge and get ink where I don't want it. I love my stamp and scrub. Oops. Thank God that had its lid on it because it just fell down on the carpet. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to put them up a little bit higher. Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. Okay, let's try it again. Pick him up. Ink up the stamp. Stamp him up. That magnet might be a little bit further, too far down yet. That's what I thought. Let's move him and try to re stamp. Perfect. Put a little bit more ink just in this one spot and see if I can get it even. Oops, wrong side. This side is what I wanted to do. Wipe that up a little bit. Okay. 
Okay. Let's see how that works. Perfect. That looks better. All right. So now I want to make sure that I mark where I had this this card. And I'll just this this corner right here. Right there. And this corner right there. And so this is gonna be the outside sent uh, card. Or outside. Okay. Let's do another one. good okay and that's done all right now the only other thing I wanted to use the stamparatus is to also get um, the sentiment for the inside so we'll pull out our large piece here and I'm gonna oops I hope I didn't get that inked up oh sure enough I did oh well okay so I've got um, this side of the um, st um, plate clean. There's nothing on there as far as stamps go. So I'm going to use this side. And I want to use just a little piece of paper here. I'm going to have to get that stamp case all inked up. Okay. So, let's see here. I want that sentiment to be right about there. And what did I do with the sentiment? It is still on the sheet. So I want him to be about right there. Oops, big no-no. What did I do? I forgot to mark where that piece of paper was going to be. Be a little bit lower. Let's move him up just a bit. Yep, that's about right. Mark him. is the inside card and this just helps me if I'm using the same piece of paper um, to line these up then I'll know where these cards the different shapes different size cards need to go okay for that guy we're gonna do the mossy gray Sorry, you can't see all of that on the screen. Perfect. Perfect on the first try. So then we can do another one. Line him up. Ink up the stamp. Oh, I got a little crazy with the ink. Okay, 
Okay, so you see I've got missed a little bit right there, so I'm going to ink it up again. Make sure I put a lot of pressure right there on that corner. There, perfect. Okay, all right, so that, my friends, is how you kind of work through how you want to get your Stamparatus set up. Now, I could just, you know, set this to the side and come back to it um, later if I didn't finish all of my cards. Um, I could, um, you know, uh, take all the stamps off, but if I do that, then I'm going to have to reposition everything. So for now, I'm just going to leave it like it is, and I'll put some, you know, paper in between these plates um, and store this. All right, put this to the side. All right, so now let's put this card together. Okay, I need this guy, I need this guy, and I need this guy, and hold on one second. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, color in the, um, the lights. Now, I um, have markers for the Crush Curry and the Cherry Cobbler, but I do not have markers for the Mossy Meadow because it's a new color this year and I just haven't um, purchased those. Um, uh, those markers. So in this card, I used garden green, which, you know, I could do because I do have that garden green marker, but I wanted to try something and I wanted to use um, the blender pen to see if I could lift up some of the ink from the pad and just mark, um, color it in. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, let's do see how this works. So I'm just going to kind of lift up some ink there and I do that one every three. So I'm going to do that. As you can see, as I'm coloring, or I don't know if you can see with the video, but the ink is getting a little bit lighter which is okay, all right? And how to get that blender back to uh, neutral colors, I just, just do this. You can kind of see the ink leaving the blender pen. All right, and then I can kind of just use my fingers to put that point back. And then I can use it for a different color. Look at that. So if you've got the blender pen and you don't have a marker um, for the uh, color that you want, but you do have the ink pad, you can use your blender pen to be able to do that. So, wow, that worked out. All right, let me put that lid back on. And then let's go ahead and color the other colors. Now remember, they're gonna go on darker than they dry. So this looks dark when I put it on, but it's gonna dry um, a little bit lighter. Perfect. All right. Pull that up. 
really nice. I'm really, really excited that I was able to use that blender pen um, to um, lift up the ink on the uh, Mo Mo uh, Mossy Meadow. Because and I used I wanted to use Mossy Meadow because that's the color that coordinates with this DSP. And when I first did it, I didn't think about the blender pen and I used the garden green, which still goes, but I really wanted to kind of match that a little bit better. And I think it turned out really nice. Okay, now next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue the designer series paper and the bottom of um, this little card panel. I'm going to try to get, line it up on the edge as close as possible. And if you want, you can kind of trim that off. I um, did a little bit longer, but I'm not going to worry about it. As long as it's not shorter than the image and it's not terribly longer, then I'm fine. Um, you can get kind of crazy uh, OCD about it, and sometimes I do, but for the purposes of this video, I'm not. I'm going to put this piece of ribbon right here down, and I'm going to do this with some glue dots. Alright, so we've got some mini glue dots here, and I'm going to place a glue dot on the end of the ribbon. there and then another one right there and then and I know this is a Stampin' Up! ribbon um, but I don't know if it's retired or not because I'm pretty sure it is retired. Are you just going to tuck your, t your tails in so it's going to be like that um, because the it must have been um, something like in celebration or something. I, I honestly don't remember, but I do know that it's um, cherry cobbler. But it's, it doesn't have anything on there, so it must have been like a freebie or something like that. All right, so now I am going to adhere. Well, first, I have to cut that out. Hold on one second. All right, I'm back. And actually, I am uh, recording this part of the video on a separate day uh, because it got interrupted the day that I was originally on filming. So you may see that I don't have the same shirt on, but that's all right. Okay, so back to where we're. So I did, um, I cut this out with the die cut, the circle die cut. And now I want to adhere that to there, or at least position it. What I'm also going to do is tie a knot with this ribbon. And I love knot bows, N-O-T, um, because they're easy, one, and two, they're movable. So once I just basically tie a knot, I can move that anywhere on the car, on the ribbon that I want it to be. And so once I've got it there, I'm just going to see if that fits. It does. I'm just going to kind of work it a little bit. All right, and then I want to trim the tails off at an angle. Oh, I hate it when I do that. Yeah, okay. There we go. All right, now I'm going to adhere this with dimensional dots, which I have here somewhere. Hold on. I should totally call my stampin' studio the uh, messy stamper because I never seem to be able to find <laughs> anything. I try to be organized, but somehow it just doesn't work. All right, so I'm going to use the dimensional dots in order to um, uh, adhere this little sentiment. And I will tell you, I don't think I'll need to do it today, but if you have your... Um, uh, dimensionals and you kind of run out of those little things that pop up you can actually trim the edges and get more use out of it that way but we don't need to do that today actually before I do that I'm going to adhere it to the card base because it will be a lot easier to do that so I'm going to place that right in the middle and then when I have that adhered 
then I will um, stick that on there. All right, so we're gonna use the snail. Oops. And I kind of try to be a little bit generous with it because it is gonna be a kind of heavy. All right, and then I get that centered in there. There's that. Then I'm going to use my, the back, can take the tape off the back. Oh, you hear my wife outside hollering at her dogs, probably uh, digging into something. All right, so that's that part. Then we need to make the inside, <clears throat> which looks like this. And we have already um, stamped the sentiment. Now I just need to glue this little piece of DSP, and I love it because I love to use up my scraps. And I think it gives it kind of a finished look to it. Oops, what happened here? Oh, that one's out. <laughs> All right, we're gonna use this one. All right, and the trick is to kind of line this up Then I'm just going to put some snail on the back of this. And then I'm going to center this. That looks good. All right. Looky there. And I love that we were able to go through that process of setting up your stamparatus to be able to make multiple cards with multiple stamps um, on various pieces of your card um, instead of just, you know, restamping this one stamp over and over again and then resetting everything. We can set it all up at once. That way we can move the Stamparatus, um, you know, to the side and then come back to it and all of our stamps are still set up. So let me get the um, camera turned around and then we can finish out this video. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video on how I made this Christmas card and how I set up my Stamparatus to be able to stamp multiple um, cards with multiple stamps all in one project. And um, I am going to post the dimensions down below. So definitely if you're interested in recreating this card or doing your own little twist, um, you can get all the dimensions for all of the uh, paper um, that I cut up and so you won't have to figure all that out. All right. Um, and then also don't forget, I am having my customer, uh, Christmas card swap, which is going to be due, I believe November 7th. I think I have to relook, but I think it's, it's definitely that Friday, whatever that date is. I'm pretty sure it's the seventh. Maybe it's the ninth. Anyway, I'll put the link down below um, so you can get access um, to how to participate in the swap. So basically what it is, is that you create five um, Christmas cards using Stampin' Up! product only. It can be retired. It does not have to be current. And then you send those in to me and then I swap them out and send, send them back to you. So then you'll get five beautiful cards back by other customers all across the country. All right? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Oh, my dogs are here. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Do hit that bell and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And there you have it. All right, everybody. Life happens. I comment. Stamp me some love. Bye-bye.